we've seen an increasing trend in investors being more and more interested, not just in sustainable investing generally, but in very specific targeted themes. And when we ask them, what themes are you most interested, the very top three were climate change, plastic waste reduction, and circular economy. Hmm. Um, you know, and I would just conclude by saying, I think that that really, um, I really resonates with a lot of things that Paul are saying that increasingly, I think there's been a real shift of people not just seeing circular economy um, as something that in many people's minds invokes, ooh, that must mean less growth, right? If we're using stuff over and over again and we're producing less stuff, mm. that must be less growth. People are now understanding that that can actually be an incredibly compelling growth opportunity and therefore investment opportunity. And that means, for example, coming back to my point about design, it means, you know, you should never just have kind of handouts, you know, and, and there's lots of handouts, subsidies, guarantees for all sorts of different companies. It has to be conditional and not conditional like a stick. It shouldn't be a negative thing that you're kind of punishing someone if they don't do something. But you can imagine that, you know, even now with COVID-19, trillions of dollars, euros, pounds are being injected into the system unless that is actually, again, designed in a way that truly builds back better. And I'm not I'm not just thinking about COVID-19 build back better, but build back better towards more sustainable, inclusive growth. In January, the, uh, the agency published a paper called uh, Growth Without Economic Growth, which for a, an official European agency might be construed as a bit provocative. So I have two questions on that. What was the goal and how it's been received? Well, I think the goal was to create from a public agency's perspective, a, a space where we can in fact uh, discuss, have a dialogue about what the true meaning is of uh, the vision behind the Eight Environment Action Programme and also in the European Green Deal, which states that we should live well within the limits of the planet. And the European Green Deal uh, starts with a sentence that says that we are dealing with existential threats now, it would be a little bit bizarre to come out of this situation without fundamentally discuss, discussing our economy, the, the growth model that we've had for decades, if not a couple hundred years, where production and consumption systems are fundamentally unsustainable. Policy agrees that we need to build back better. We need to look at what growth for the future looks like. We need to understand what good growth is compared to extracting a little bit of extra growth out of that race to the bottom of the linear system. That's a very different conversation. So what is good growth? How do we incentivize good growth? Then you end up with the policy following suit. You end up with finance following suit because of the policy set that makes it much easier for that company to shift towards that circular regenerative system. Then you end up with a less vulnerable place for that chief exec who is in that B2C, to, B to um, you know, very high volume, for example, very low value material like plastic packaging. That's a hard shift. Growth is an artifact of the linear economy. Producing more, consuming more, uh, and disposing of more. Even when we're producing services or other intangible things, growth creates waste and it damages the climate. A better concept is one of abundance an abundance of things, experiences, interactions, opportunities, prosperity. Abundance is what you can have in a regenerative system, like a forest or a coral reef. We should be measuring the abundance of the circular economy. We develop measures of efficiency, productivity and growth to support the linear industrial economy. We must develop measures of regeneration and abundance to support our circular post-industrial future.